For those of you guys that didn't get to see this, the FOMC meeting last week, of course, the Federal Open Market Committee, they made a decision on whether or not to cut rates in the United States. And of course, interest rates impact all of us. We were trying to buy a house, trying to buy a car, trying to borrow money. It also impacts us on the savings side. If we're trying to save money, treasury bills go up in terms of rate of return, your savings accounts rates have been up, um, you name it, whatever. Money market funds doesn't really matter. And so right now we're, we're in a, a unique position. We've had high interest rates that have been holding high for six and a half months or longer than that now, actually. And we are currently in a predicament where the Fed is trying to decide, should we cut rates? Because they're in a point now where if they don't start to cut rates, the economy starts to fatigue, as I like to say. If they do start to cut rates, they wonder if it's going to heat the economy up too much. The first thing I want to open up for you guys is the CME. It's a Fed watch tool. You can Google this CME Fed watch tool. It's what I use to decide what the probability is of a rate cut in the coming meeting. And as you can see, our next meeting is going to be happening September 18th of 2024. Now, here's the most interesting thing about this upcoming meeting. I watch this every single day. And so last week, midweek, Right now we're at 5.5%, so you can see it's not currently on the chart. So this means, in layman's terms, that the market, the futures market, is predicting that we have a 20% chance that rates will cut on the September meeting from 5.5 to 5.25. Yes, this also means the markets, futures markets, are currently predicting a 50 basis point rate cut. Now, why do I say this? Last week, the market was about 85% chance that we would cut rates by 25 basis points. That's what the futures markets were predicting last week. But late last week, when data started to come out slower, that was labor data, we can look at it, people started to panic. You guys saw it. Put a 111 in the chat if you saw the market panic last week. Sell-off after sell-off after sell-off. And we talk about that. We can also talk about the fear in the market, the VIX, the volatility index, right here, spiked to 27 that's a level we haven't seen since March of 2023. A year and a half, we hadn't seen a level like that. Massive fear in the market. People across the globe started to become fearful. Why? Because the unemployment rate spiked again to 4.3%. By the way, where did we start? Ask ourselves that question. Look at all this unemployment data. Where did unemployment start? It started down in here. Believe it or not, the lowest level we saw was 3.4%. We're almost up to 4.4%, a full percentage point in the upward direction. There hasn't been a time in history where within 12 months of that big of a move in unemployment after it had happened, starting now, that we hadn't seen a recession. People started to get fearful. Are we going to have a recession? Is the good times over? Is the bull market over? Everybody's asking the same questions. And so that's what started this mass hysteria. The second thing that you had to realize at that same time is look at the yields of the bond market. The 10-year yield effectively dropped from July 1st, 4.486%, to now sitting at 3.794%. What the markets do is they try to predict what's to come into the future. Have we reduced rates yet, guys, in the chat box? Yes or no? Have we reduced rates yet? Have rates gone down at this point? So all of you guys said no, we haven't reduced rates. I saw your guys' comments. So why would a yield drop if we haven't reduced rates? Can anybody answer that question? Why would a yield drop if we haven't reduced rates? Well, it's because the markets in general try to do what's called pricing things in. They try to predict the future. That's why you always heard the term, buy the rumor, sell the news. Right now, it's the rumor. The rumor is that the Fed is going to reduce rates in September, and so rates have started to tumble. On the flip side, and this is where I said, there's some unique opportunities for those of you guys that like fixed income assets. And so on the flip side of this, if the yield is going down, this is a U.S. government bond yield. In general, what direction are bonds going, up or down? So if a yield is going to go down, what direction is a bond going to go, up or down? It's going to go up. Now, this is maybe a new ticker symbol for some of you, but this is the 20-year bond, TLT. This is a 20-year treasury bond ETF. It gives an opportunity for folks to buy into an index fund and try to trade the benefit. Right now is a really unique time of yields dropping and bonds going up. Of course, when yields drop, bonds go up. 
And so in this case, take a look at this. This is the first time we really started to see moves like this. We saw a push in October, came back down. But then last week, this is a one-week move right here of about 5%. Incredible. How many of you guys right now put a 111 in the chat? Or you're constantly looking for an investment that has low risk, decently high reward. Put a one in the chat if that's you. For those of you guys saying that, I think that there's a, a fairly unique opportunity right now. The unique opportunity is the fact that a one-year yield is currently paying 4.38%. Now, nobody's going to get out of bed for 4.38%, but think about this for a minute. Putting you guys on game. This is how I am moving uh, cash around as we speak. I'm showing you inside of my head. So what am I doing right now with extra cash that I don't necessarily want fully invested in a stock, fully invested into something that's illiquid, like a business. I want to have liquidity. What does liquidity mean? I want to have an investment that makes me money, but I want to be able to pull it out at any, at any given time because there's a better opportunity on the left. So here's what I'm doing. First thing I'm doing is I am buying one-year bonds. Now, a one-year bond, what is that going to yield me in a year, guys? Everybody can see it. I put it in white and bold. 4.38%. Very simply put, if I invest $100,000 into a one-year bond, at the end of a year, I will have $104,380. I will make $4,380. That's the 4.38%. Not a tremendous amount of money. But when you think about the stock market, as you guys know, the stock market on average yields anywhere from 8 to 12%. If we all just said, we believe what's going to go down, what do we believe is going to go down? The yields. Why do we believe the yields are going to go down? because of the Fed funds rate. And if they're gonna go down, we all just said, what do we think is going to go up? The actual bond themselves, the bond market themselves. And so now you can see that right now is a very unique time. It's like a hedge play. First and foremost, as yields drop, the bond that you own in this case becomes more valuable. Why is it more valuable? Well, I'm getting 4.38% and if you wait, you're getting, I don't know, 2.7%, which would take a tremendous amount of time to get there, but you, you wait, you get less. Why does that make mine more valuable? Well, I'm getting a higher rate of return versus you. And when that yield goes down, what goes up? The bond market. Now, this is TLT. This is the ETF, 20 plus year. But even if you go to the US, this is the bond itself. What I want you to look at, look at is that's the one year bond. TLT is the 20 year. My hedge is this, simply put. While I'm buying my bonds at 4.38%, I'm also putting some capital into TLT. Because as I'm getting my guaranteed yield, I know I'm going to get 4.38%. That's it. Period. I know I'm going to get that. As I'm going to get that guaranteed yield, I look here at the potential downside. In order for this to drop further dramatically, the 20 year, we have to think outside the box as to what would need to happen in order for the 20 year to actually drop. We'd have to have a prospect of rates going up. In order for this chart to drop, rates have to go up. Hence, when did we start this trek? 2020. When did this start its acceleration? Right here in 2022. You see this acceleration here? That's when we started raising rates. So then you say, well, Patrick, why did this chart drop before we were raising rates? It's because it was being priced in. So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to catch that pricing in. Right now, people are pricing in the idea that the Fed is going to cut rates. So if they are going to cut rates, that means our treasury yields are going to drop. So I'm locking those in high at one year. Still liquid, but I'm locking them in at 4.38 for one year, 4.4, 4.5, whatever I've been locking them in at. At the same time, I'm then playing the hedge, saying I believe the bond, that bond prices will go up. Why is that a phenomenal return? Well, I have a baseline of 4.38. This goes up another 4, 5, 6% in the next year. Guys, come on now. In the next year. It just went up 5% this week. In the next year. I'm saying the next 12 months. If I can see this thing going up four, five, six, seven percent, guess what? That's a nine, eleven, twelve percent annualized return. 